Hi there, it's Asia. Today I want to take a full section of the IELTS Reading Academic Test and solve it together with you. You'll be able to see my strategy and that got me 8.5 and hopefully a 9 soon. And you'll be able to practice too. Uh, the material is coming from the official practice test published on the British Council website. The link to the full test is going to be in the description box below. If you want links to more practice materials, download my IELTS study plan too. And now, let's get started! Ok, we have our passage on the left and questions on the right. The very first thing to do is to read the title. The triune brain. I don't know the word triune, but I know the word brain. That's what's inside our head. And we know that the whole text is going to be about it. Ok, now, before I start reading the passage, I look at the first set of questions. Classify the following as typical of reptilian limbic or neocortex. Ok, I know that cortex is part of our brain. And we have three options, A, B, C. Now we look at the questions. So for each of them we need to say whether it's A, B or C. And we have a number of questions. Most likely, these questions are not going to be in the same order as information is in the text. That means that we need to read all the options before we start reading the text. And I actually want to read them quite carefully and try to memorize what we're going to look for. Giving up short-term happiness for future gains. And I underline keywords. Maintaining the bodily functions necessary for life. Ok, bodily functions. Experiencing the pain of losing another. Ok, the pain of losing. Forming communities and social groups. Making a decision and carrying it out. Ok, decisions. Guarding areas of land. Guarding. Developing explanations for things. Explanations. Looking after one's young. Young or baby's children. Responding quickly to sudden movement or noise. Responding quickly. Now I'm ready to start reading the passage. I'm going to read it quite quickly, just trying to find any places where they talk about one of our questions. So I'm not looking for the answer straight away, I'm just looking for places where the answer is going to be. Uh, I suggest reading the first sentence of each passage more carefully, because that's a topic sentence and should give you the idea of what you can find in this passage. The first of our three brains to evolve is what scientists call the reptilian cortex. Our three brains. So they say we have three brains and we see the first option, reptilian cortex. So that's what this passage is going to be about. And we see reptilian cortex is the option A. Let's continue reading quickly. This brain sustains the elementary activities of animal survival, such as respiration, adequate rest and a beating heart. Look here. Respiration, adequate rest and a beating heart. Does it remind you anything? It reminds me this one. Maintaining the bodily functions necessary for life. Uh, let me just highlight. So we are talking about this sentence. 
were not required to consciously think about these activities. Respiration is when we breathe, rest and beating heart. So these are bodily functions necessary for life, right? And the passage was about a reptilian cortex. It means we can put A. And now let's continue reading. So I remove the highlight. Let's continue. The reptilian cortex also houses the starter center, a mechanism that facilitates swift reactions to unexpected occurrences in our surroundings. That panicked lurch you experience when a door slams shut somewhere in the house or the heightened awareness you feel when a twig cracks in a nearby bush while out on an evening stroll are both examples of the reptilian cortex at work. Does this bit remind you any question? Please look through questions and try to find it yourself. I can see this one. Responding quickly to sudden movement and noise. And we can read swift reactions to unexpected occurrences. Swift reactions or responding quickly. These are the same things, right? And sudden movement is an unexpected occurrence. So we can see that all words are paraphrased. It's very typical for a correct answer. It means this option is also about reptilian cortex, option A. When it comes to interaction with others, the reptilian brain offers up only the most basic impulses, aggression, mating and territorial defense. There is no great difference in this sense between a crocodile defending its spot along the river and a tough war between two urban gangs. Okay, that's the next bit. Can you recognize any words, any options? I give you a few seconds. I spotted this word, territorial defense. And if you look at our options, we have this one, guarding areas of land. So areas of land and territorial are synonyms, right? And defense, guarding. So again, every word is paraphrased. And so this is also about reptilian cortex. Option A. Although the lizard may stake a claim to its habitat, it exerts total indifference towards the well-being of its young. Any words you can recognize? I've spotted the word young. And look here. Looking after one's young. Is it the correct answer? Let's compare the rest of the sentence. So here we're looking for looking after or taking care of one's young. Uh, let's have a look at the sentence again. You may not know some of the words. It doesn't matter. Just try to concentrate on what you're looking for. So lizards, reptilian cortex. Yes. And then we can see exerts total indifference towards the well-being of its young. So the crucial word is indifference. So lizards 
are indifferent towards their young. And we are looking for someone who is looking after its young. So that is not answer A. That would be an incorrect answer. And that is a typical IELTS trap. If you see the exact word match, most likely it's not the correct answer. Listen to the anguished squeal of a dolphin separated from its pod, or witness the sight of elephants mooring its dead. However, it is clear that a new development is at play. Scientists have identified this as a limbic cortex. Okay, that's option B, right? Let's highlight it. Now we're going to talk about limbic cortex. Let's read a bit further. Unique to mammals, the limbic cortex impels creatures to nurture their offspring by delivering feeling of tenderness and warmth to the parent when children are nearby. Do you think we can find any answer here? Okay, we just talked about looking after one's young. And here we can read, unique to mammals, the limbic cortex impels creatures to nurture their offspring. Nurture their offspring means looking after one's young. And that's what mammals do. Limbic cortex, option B. You might have noticed that we read several sentences before and didn't find any answer there. Sometimes it happens in IELTS, but most likely we just missed something. So let's look through the remaining options quickly. We're still looking for happiness for future gains, pain of losing, communities, decisions, explanations for things. The first sentence about lizards not caring about their young was a trap. Now we know why it's here and here. We read about elephants mourning their dead, right? Mourning their dead. And here we're looking for experiencing the pain of losing another. And the pain of losing means mourning their dead, right? That means that is also about limbic cortex. Here we can also answer B. And let's continue. These same sensations also cause mammals to develop various types of social relations and kinship networks. Do you think any answer is here? I'm going to give you a few seconds. I would say the key words are social relations. And we were looking for forming communities and social groups. And here we can read that mammals develop various types of social relations and kinship networks. So kinship networks, so networks or social groups. Yeah, this one looks very much like this one. I would say this is B, limbic cortex. When we are with others of our kind, be it at soccer practice, church, school, a nightclub, we experience positive sensations of togetherness, solidarity and comfort. If we spend too long away from these networks, then loneliness sets in and encourages us to seek companionship. I think it's just an example from the previous sentence and we are not looking for anything else here. Let's continue. So now we need to find just three answers. Happiness for future gains, making a decision and developing explanations for things. 
only human capabilities extend far beyond the scope of those two cortexes. Okay, probably we're gonna read about the last one, the neocortex. We haven't heard about it before yet. Humans eat, sleep and play, but we also speak, plot, rationalize and debate finer points of morality. Our unique abilities as a result of an expensive third brain, the neocortex. Okay, that's a keyword, the neocortex, which engages with logic, reasons and ideas. Okay, neocortex. That's what we are reading about. The power of the neocortex comes from its ability to think beyond the present concrete moment. While other animals are mainly restricted to impulsive actions. Although some, such as apes, can learn and remember simple lessons, humans can think about the big picture. We can string together simple lessons. For example, an apple drops downward from a tree, hurting others, causes unhappiness. Uh, to develop complex theories of physical and social phenomena, such as the laws of gravity and a concern for human rights. Do you see anything here? Any of the answers we're looking for? I'm going to give you a few seconds again. I can see it here we can, then we don't really need all that, develop complex theories of physical and social phenomena. And here, let me underline it, uh, we can see developing explanations for things. So developing complex theories or developing explanations for things. So theories explain things, right? And actually the word developing and develop are repeated, but I still think that's a correct answer. So we're gonna go with C. And we just need to find two more things. Happiness for future gains and making decisions. The neocortex is also responsible for the process by which we decide on and commit to particular causes of action. The process by which we decide on and commit to particular causes of action. That is the same as making a decision and carrying it out. Making a decision is the same as we decide on and commit to particular causes of action means carry it out. So that is C. So now we only need to find the last one, giving up short-term happiness for future gains. Strung together over time, these choices can accumulate into feats of progress unknown to other animals. Anticipating a better grade on the following morning's exam, a student can ignore the limbic urge to socialize and go to sleep early. Over three years, this going sacrifice translates into a first-class degree and a scholarship to graduate school. Over a lifetime, it can mean groundbreaking contributions and so on. So here we read about a student not going to a party to study. And I think it's quite close to the option we're looking for, giving up short-term happiness for future gains. But it should be even more concrete. Let's read the next one. The ability to sacrifice our drive for immediate satisfaction in order to benefit later is a product of the neocortex. That's it. To sacrifice our drive for immediate satisfaction in order to benefit later. 
sacrifice drive for immediate satisfaction is the same as giving up short-term happiness. So happiness and satisfaction are quite similar, right? For future gains or in order to benefit later. You see, each part of the question is paraphrased in this sentence and this is neocortex. Okay, so let's answer C. Now that we've completed all the set of questions, I would immediately transfer these answers into my answer sheet if you take a paper-based exam. Don't leave all your answers until the last moment in case you'll be running out of time. Let me move the passage down to the paragraphs we haven't read yet. These three. And we have the last set of questions. First of all, we read the task. Complete the sentences below. Use no more than two words from the passage. Okay, the keys are two words. That's very important. Everything is a word. An article is a word. A preposition is a word. And you must not write more than two. Okay, another important tip here is when you write your words in, the sentence should become grammatically correct. So when you think that something is a correct answer, just read the whole sentence again with those words and check if it makes sense and if it's correct. If it's not correct, then it means you need to find other words. I know that in this type of question, most likely we're going to find our answers in the same order as information is presented in the text. I have a whole video where I analyzed which questions come in order and which don't. I will link it in the description box below. Because they come in order, all we need is to read the first question and then look for the answer. And then the next question and so on. Okay, the first question is a person with only a functioning reptilian cortex is known as is known as tells us that there should be a specific term here. And we are looking for a word or words that would define a person with only functioning reptilian cortex. So these are our keywords, functioning reptilian cortex. And remember we read that there is reptilian cortex, so reptilian, limbic and neocortex. So we are looking for a person where these two will not work, only the reptilian cortex, yes? And let's read the paragraph. My guess is that this answer, number 23, is going to be in this paragraph. Please pause the video now and try to find it yourself and then resume it and we'll do it together. Okay, ready? Let's start reading. Understanding the tree and brain can help us appreciate the different natures of brain damage and physiological disorders. Think, can we use any two words for a person with only reptilian cortex? No, it doesn't look like that. Next. The most devastating form of brain damage, for example, is a condition in which someone is understood to be brain dead. We're getting closer. In this state, a person appears merely unconscious. Sleeping, perhaps, but this is illusory. Here, the reptilian brain is functioning on autopilot despite the permanent loss of other cortexes. Permanent loss of other cortexes. That tells us that a person functions only on reptilian cortex. Yes? And we need to find how this person is called. In this sentence, there is nothing. So probably it's somewhere before. 
Again, in this sentence, it's just the description of the person. Let's go back. The most devastating form of brain damage. So now we know that they're talking about what we need. Is a condition in which someone is understood to be brain dead. Okay, these are two crucial words, brain dead. And now let's try to write them here as brain dead. Let me make it bold so we see that answer. And before we move to the next question, I usually quickly reread the sentence just to make sure it's correct. Pay attention to grammar and to sense, of course. A person with only a functioning reptilian cortex is known as brain dead. Sounds good. Let's move on. Question number 24. Something in humans is associated with limbic disruption. The key words are limbic disruption. Limbic, remember we read about the limbic cortex, so that was the one about animals. And disruption means that something is wrong, limbic disruption. And now, because the words are at the beginning of the sentence, just imagine what kind of words are we looking for so that they would fit in here. I would say we're looking for a noun, most likely. Something that will go with mm -hmm, in humans. Okay. So our answer should be somewhere in the next paragraph. Please, again, pause the video, find the answer and then resume it. Disturbances to limbic cortex are registered in a different manner. Disturbances to limbic cortex. And we are looking for limbic disruption. So limbic is the same, disruption and disturbances are synonyms, right? So we're just looking for our words. Pups with limbic damage can move around and feed themselves well, but do not register the presence of their litter mates. Okay, that's just about pups, that's not our term. Scientists have observed how, after limbic lobotomy, one impaired monkey stepped on its outraged peers, blah blah blah. I see some terms here, after a limbic lobotomy. Is it the correct answer? I can tell you why it's not. Well, first of all, because we would need to write three words, right? There is an article here, a limbic lobotomy, three words. But here we can only write two words. And usually in IELTS, you would not just uh, throw away a word in the middle and take a lobotomy. So, no, let's continue. That's an example about the monkeys. In IELTS, it's very important to ignore the information you don't need and to concentrate on what you're looking for, because otherwise you're just going to see too many words you don't know and sentences are long and complex. So don't forget, we're looking for those words. In our own species, limbic damage is closely related to psychopathic behavior. Do you see the answer? Again, limbic damage is also synonymous to limbic disruption. That's what we're looking for, right? And then they say it's related to sociopathic behavior. And these are two words. I think that's the answer. In a computer-based IELTS, you can just copy-paste. And that's what I've done. But in a paper-based IELTS, 
always make sure you copy words correctly, you don't make a spelling mistake because that would make your answer wrong. Okay, so check the spelling. And again, let's read the whole sentence. Sociopathic behavior in humans is associated with limbic disruption. I think it sounds good. Next. An industrial accident caused Phineas Gage to lose part of his... Here it's easy. We have the name. We're looking for the name. So we need to find out what he lost, right? Actually, because we're looking for the name, we can just scan the text until we find it. Okay, I can see it here. I can see his surname several times. Let's start from the beginning. One of the neurological wonders of history occurred, it doesn't matter, when a railway worker named mm -hmm, our person survived an accident. During a metal road scoot, his skull, okay, taking a considerable here, taking a considerable amount of his neocortex with it. So we can see that there was an accident. Yes, and in our question, we read an industrial accident. Yeah, so caused him to lose part of his accident. Then the, that's a description of the accident. And we can see that something happened to his skull, but he didn't lose his skull, right? Taking a considerable amount of his neocortex with it. And taking something with it means he lost it. Neocortex. Let's read the whole sentence. An industrial accident caused Phineas Gage to lose part of his neocortex. As you remember, the task was to write not more than two words, which means we can totally write one word. That's our answer. Let's move on to the last question. After his accident, co-workers noticed an imbalance between Gage's mm -hmm, and higher order thinking. So we are looking for imbalance between two things, between his something and higher order thinking. Please pause the video now and try to find the answer yourself. And then we continue. Let's continue reading. Though Gage continued to work and live as before, his fellow employees observed a shift in the equilibrium of his personality. Okay, we read about co-workers noticing something. Gage's animal propensities were now sharply pronounced while his intellectual abilities suffered. And then we can read that some kind of jokes replaced his once quick wit. I don't think the answer is here. We just disregard this bit. So we're looking for imbalance. And here I can see a shift in the equilibrium. That is an imbalance, right? And here is the description. Gage's animal propensities were now sharply pronounced while his intellectual abilities suffered. Intellectual abilities suffered. So that's about his higher order thinking. And before that, we read about animal propensities. That means that he behaved a little bit like an animal. Um, he was prone to do things that animals are prone to do. In IELTS, you can find out the correct answer even if you don't know the key word, for example, the word propensities. As long as you know words imbalance, you know words thinking, uh, intellectual abilities, and then you can just figure out where the correct answer is. Let's read the sentence in full. After his accident, 
co-workers noticed an imbalance between Gage's animal propensities and higher order thinking. The sentence is grammatically correct, right? So that's our correct answer. Okay, we're done here. And that is the end of the section. How many questions could you answer correctly? Please leave me a comment because I want to know what your level is. That was the second section of the test. So you should spend not more than 20 minutes on it. And then you spend only 15 minutes on the first one, which is the easiest, and leave about 25 minutes for the third one, which is the most difficult. Then you give yourself the best chance to answer as many questions as you can correctly. Another big time saver during IELTS reading is knowing which questions come in order and which don't. And I talked about it in detail in this video here. Thank you for watching me today and good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!